The entire book is about depression because you gotta write what you know best. This is another writing vlog, and whenever I write, I like to listen to movie soundtracks to get in the mood. Now it's gonna be a lot easier for me to do that because I got Raycon earbuds, which are the sponsor of this video. Their newest model is the Everyday E25 earbuds, and this is the best one so far. It has six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a fun compact design to make sure that you have a really nice fit. There's different size options for your ears and a cute little case for you to charge. I've seen celebrities like Cardi B and Snoop Dogg wear them, and it was really nice is that they started about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds. I'll have a link in my description where you can get 15% off your first order. All right, now on to the vlog. At the end of February, I flew to LA for a business trip, which thankfully occurred right before the coronavirus spread and I was able to avoid getting sick or infecting other people. This was also around the time I posted my first writing vlog, so I want to say thank you for all the support and positive encouragement. I will say though that I think some of the jokes I said in my vlog got taken too literally. I mentioned that I gender reversed the main character, which means that a girl is going to end up having feelings for another female character. And I was joking about how I would be the pioneer for straight authors writing gay romances because, you know, that's a thing. But to my surprise, a lot of people were really excited about this and thought I was writing an LGBT story. So I don't want to get anyone's hopes up into thinking I'm writing like some epic gay story. The romance is a very, very small part of the book. I think it's nice to see two girls falling for each other and being soft and cute and shit, but it's not the whole point of it. So please don't expect anything more than that. I don't think I could even write a romance well in the first place considering my vagina hasn't had action in years. I have been very selective in what I share about my story. I'm only giving out bits and pieces that are out of context so that you don't get the full picture. I'm going to share even more in this writing vlog and it's going to seem like it's a lot but it's actually not and really anything I share is not the whole story especially when I might even change things later on and that's the whole point of these writing vlogs. They exist for us to look back on and see what's similar and see what's different. I'm back in my hotel room with this glass of champagne that I never drank. I don't know why I accepted it because I don't even like to drink. I know why I accepted it. It's just because it was free. Oh shit, I just realized that my desk has a bunch of pads <laughs> in the background. So what happened was when I first arrived at my hotel, I basically dumped everything out of my backpack so that I could only bring the essentials with me to the office. That is why I have a pile of pads on the table because I have a very heavy blood flow, okay? I have a friend who is gonna pick me up for dinner. So this is very limited time that I have to cram as much writing as I can before he picks me up and I have to socialize and be a normal person. However, I forgot that it is very hard to write when you are balancing a full-time job and socialization. I don't know how we're gonna do it, but this will be another hectic week where I try to cram in as much writing as I can. Last time I did these vlogs, I was in Texas and I was in the outlining stage. I am now in the writing stage. I'm kinda done with my outline, and by that I mean I was mostly finished with it and I know the basic skeleton, but towards the last few chapters, my brain kind of just gave up and I didn't want to spend more time thinking about all the details and I just wanted to dive into writing right away. So now here we are. I started rewriting chapter 7 this morning on the plane. One of the other main characters has now been introduced and this character is a straight up bitch. I don't think I have enough time to finish this chapter, but I want to write enough to get to the part where this character does a fucking chokehold on the main character and threatens her life and you know no, just typical things that she does. Also, her character is a good excuse for me to beat the shit out of my main character because that's one of the things that I really like to write about in this book. For some reason, I just really like beating up corn. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and write now. Perfect timing. My friend just texted me right when I finished the scene where this character puts corn in a chokehold and is like, shut the fuck up. Really, that's all I wanted to write about in this chapter. Actually, no, later on, corn is gonna continue being a miserable, angsty bitch. So I'm looking forward to that too. This is a fun chapter. I'm getting to a point where finally corn is with other characters. And the moment that she was reunited with Ellie, it 
became so much more fun to write the two sisters because they're so different from each other, but they really show each other's personalities because they have a little bit of banter going on. They're arguing like sisters do, but they still care for each other. And now with the introduction of this new character, now it's extra fun to write because I just have an excuse to beat the shit out of Corin. Maybe it's saying something about me that I'm basing all of my negative qualities onto Corin, the main character, and then proceeding to use the rest of the story to beat the shit out of her. We're not gonna get into that because I have to go grab dinner with my friend. Let's grab dinner. After I got ramen with my friend, I went to bed and woke up to the next morning for my second day at work. If you're curious, I was in LA to work on a campaign that Twitter is doing for Asian Pacific Heritage Month. It's a lot of ideating and concepting and putting together presentations. So that's pretty much what I had been working on every day that week, which makes what I'm about to say in the next clip make a lot more sense. I am so brain dead from working all day, but I have to force myself to make some writing progress with this chapter because my friend is gonna pick me up. He said he was coming soon because he wants me to see the sunset when we ride on the motorcycle. So on one hand, yay, riding on motorcycles is fun. But on the other hand, I'm so fucking tired. This is gonna be a reoccurring theme <laughs> in all of my vlogs, just me complaining how tired I am as I barely write a few words. But hopefully if uh, people actually watch this crap, maybe you will feel more encouraged to work on your project, no matter how busy you are. We'll never have the time to work on this shit, so we have to make it somehow. Time to write. As we all watch this montage of me writing, I just wanna say that I hate how terrible my posture is here. I slouch all the time, whether I'm sitting down or standing up. And if anyone knows how to fix my hunchback, please let me know. I wish I could have recorded the motorcycle ride because it was so beautiful during sunset, but obviously that would have been too dangerous. But I love riding on my friend's bike. It is so much fun. We biked up to the mountains. Here are some bad photos that I took of the starry sky that don't do it any justice. Just came back to my hotel room and I figured I might as well mention that I don't have any glass cup, so I am using my <laughs> champagne glass as my cup instead. Isn't that so bougie? Because this also acts as a, you know, toothbrush holder. I am so inventive. Since I was feeling refreshed, I decided to write a little bit more that night, and here are my updates. I wrote about a thousand words, which is good progress for my standards. Again, this is a fun chapter because Corin gets to interact with other people like Ellie and this new character. I might as well just say what her name is since I'm gonna refer to her pretty often. Her name is Mal. I'm aware that there is another popular character named Mal in Shadow and Bone. In my defense, when I first read this story, her name was already Mal before I even knew Shadow and Bone was a thing. I want to keep her name because of specific reasons that I cannot say, but I figure she's very different from Lee Bardugo's character that she isn't even worth comparing to him because they are in two completely different worlds altogether. Right now they are in this winter wonderland type of place which is very ironic that I'm trying to write that in the middle of LA without revealing too much. Cora and Ellie are technically in Mal's territory so when she shows up she's just like Bitch, who the hell are you? Mal is a fun character because she just has a very low tolerance for bullshit. There's a specific line that she tells Corin where she says, you have a liar spirit and I can see it in you. And this will also be referenced again towards the end of the chapter where she states once again that Corin is not an honest person. I'm just very delighted whenever I write a line like that for reasons that I cannot say. I've stopped at a scene where they are now in the castle and I've just been describing in vivid terms as I can how grand and majestic the castle is because this bitch is bougie as fuck. So when she shows it to them and when she describes it, to them. She's very smug about it. And she says, I've always wanted to have my own castle and rule over people. Then I realized I don't like people. Now I just have a castle for myself. She's the type of person who thought she wanted to be the head bitch in charge, but then she realizes that she doesn't even care about people. So now she's just the head bitch and she can just conjure up food whenever she can because she is this all powerful being. So whatever food they want, they could literally eat it, which is something that they are not used to because like I've said in previous vlogs, Corin is a poor ass bitch. And so naturally Corin is very suspicious that 
a bitch like Mal would even offer food to them. So she says, how do we know you're not trying to poison us? And Mal is just over here pouring a glass of wine for herself. And she says, I've thought of about 50 ways to kill you by now. And believe me, offering food is not one of them. So yeah, she's fun to write. Honestly, maybe I'm just using it as an excuse to insult Corin and kind of physically beat her up a little bit. Now I'm changing it so that there is some tension between the two sisters, but then there's also a lot of shame that Corin feels because despite her arguing against Ellie a lot, she also has a lot of shame for feeling like she failed her sister. And I just want to, you know, emphasize on the shame because that makes some good angst. Ellie glanced down at her worn out shoes, the dirtied rubber sole nearly falling off. She looked back at me, the dark pulls of her eyes that told me she already accepted her fate. Is it much of a life if it feels like we're already dead? She asked. I wanted to tell her yes, that there was more to our lives beyond this, that we could make meaning out of our struggles. We had suffered for a reason, but I couldn't say anything as she stared back at me because we both knew it would have been a lie and that sometimes people suffered and died and there was no good reason for any of it. Corin, you angsty little bitch. I think a lot of people, when they deal with certain struggles in their lives, people try to find meaning out of it. And Corin is just at a point where she realizes there is no meaning to it. Sometimes people have shitty lives and sometimes people die in unfair and cruel ways. And there's no reason behind it. There's no greater grander purpose to it. It's not a test. It's not a challenge. It's not God's plan. Sometimes people just suffer for no reason just because they were born in a terrible place. And even though Ellie is a bit younger and naive and wants to feel like she can have some sort of hope in the world, Corin feels like she can't even give her that hope because she doesn't believe in it. I am finding this satisfaction in just channeling so much of my negativity into this character. It does feel like an outlet for me. I wouldn't say that she's a self-insert because she still has some good qualities whereas I have none. <laughs> Let's see how much progress I make tomorrow. Here is another day in LA, another day working at my job, and another day where I complain about how tired I am once I get back to my hotel. The thing about juggling a full-time job that requires you to use your brain energy with the limited brain cells that you have is that when you are also juggling writing a novel, you still have to use your brain even when you come back from work. So that is what I am gonna do right now. I made kind of tentative plans with one of my friends for dinner, but he actually might be working late. And if that's the case, that means I can have dinner by myself and I can have more time to write by myself. So I'm secretly kind of hoping that is the case. I don't know. It's like a win-win either way. I like hanging out with him, but I also like having alone time too. My fate will rest in his hands, but until he hits me up telling me whether he's free or not, I am going to try to squeeze in writing time. Hey, let's do tomorrow. I got my ass kicked today. No worries. Good luck at work. Little do you know that I am so glad that you are too busy to socialize with me because now I can work on my novel. What? What do you have to say? Yeah, yeah, I'll have movie and dinner with you, but tonight I will get writing done. I was so stoked to have the night to myself, which really goes to show how much of an introvert I am. I decided to walk over to a sushi restaurant that was near my hotel and I ordered like $40 worth of food. I don't even give a fuck because my workplace is paying for it anyway. And if they don't, then I'm gonna use this for tax deductions for my YouTube channel since I'm using these clips in the video. And now you know why I always show food in my vlogs. My progress for today was 771 words, which it's not that much, but again, I guess it's better than nothing. I want to write more and I could stay up a little bit to write more, but I know that my brain is slowing down and I'm not able to write anything good. I stopped at a part where Corin is angsting once again. <laughs> what else is new though? This time she is feeling a lot of shame. When I wrote this main character, I gave this character a lot of my flaws. The main one being that this character is extremely negative. She is very cynical and pessimistic, but this time I'm really diving into why she is so negative and why she interprets everything so poorly, even when good things are happening to her. I mean, they don't happen that often, but even when they do, she cannot truly appreciate or embrace them. This entire story is basically about depression. I got the idea directly from some mental health bullshit that I had been dealing with 
with and it made me think wait a minute what if I turn this into a story but in a fantasy setting I can't say what it is because I want to keep the synopsis a secret the entire book is about depression because you got to write what you know best if anyone has ever thought that I might be capitalizing on gay relationships don't worry because I'm actually too busy capitalizing on my depression instead three of the main characters represent the different aspects of depression that I have gone through so in this case of Corin, I've given her all of my negative Negativity and cynicism. In the case of Emilia, she is a very privileged person who has no reason to be sad, but she is anyway. And there's a lot of guilt. It's like she has all these nice things in her life, but she doesn't even want her life in the first place. The whole thing about Amelia is that she fucking avoids any negative emotions. That's her coping mechanism, just total avoidance. She uses escapism so that she doesn't have to think about her own problems. And naturally, because she is in a more privileged position, there are other characters who are depressed, but have way worse circumstances that resent her for it because depression sucks but it sucks a hell of a lot more when you don't have enough money or food to take care of yourself and then there's Mal who I'm finding represents a lot of the anger and wrath that comes with depression just the anger at how unfair the world is and the desire to just isolate yourself from the rest of humanity and I think I'm better able to develop this now compared to how I was five years ago I feel like now I am a bit more emotionally intuitive to mental health and the things that I have gone through and just have been super reflective and I feel like I'm able to channel that knowledge into those characters too and figure out why that makes them tick. For example, what I'm writing right now with Corin. In the first draft, she was a main character who was just very negative all the time and cynical. And the reason for that is because she's used to fending for herself. It's like a survival mechanism to be cynical and overly realistic and not expect good things because you have to repair yourself for the worst that can happen. Growing up in poverty and having limited access and resources to food and other basic necessities, that kind of stuff has wired her to be in like a survival mode all the time. So even if something good were to happen, like right now in this chapter, they're finally able to eat a big ass buffet of food that the other character, Mal, is providing with her magic. Corin is still not fucking around with this because she's like, this food is poison. This character is trying to kill us. If we eat it, we're gonna die because some things are too good to be true and nothing comes for free. If a lot of bad things happen in your life, you just get trained to look out for that kind of shit. Now, there's like a another layer that I'm adding to this because when they finally eat the food, she has never eaten a good meal before up until this moment. In the first draft, when she first takes into the bite, she becomes overwhelmed with the taste of a real meal and it's so overwhelming that it moves her to the point of tears. We get it, you're poor, get over it. Now, as I'm writing this, I'm figuring out that she's not just emotional because it's her first time eating good food and she's overwhelmed by it. She is now upset because when when she's eating it and she watches Ellie eat it, within seconds, this person has made Ellie happier than Corin has ever seen her. And that's the real reason why she is so overcome with emotion because it's not about her eating good food for the first time, but also realizing that this is also Ellie's first time eating good food. And as an older sister, the only family member for Ellie, she was never able to provide that kind of comfort slash necessity slash luxury. And that's why even if good things were to happen later on throughout the story, there is like that nagging sense of guilt. Deep down, Corin thinks that if Ellie had been born with a different sister instead of her, she would have been a lot happier than she could have ever been with Corin. Anyway, my brain is slowly dying, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to bed. <laughs> I am back at my hotel, just wrapped up work. I have about 20 minutes until my friend is gonna swing by and grab dinner with me. So time is of the essence here. Honestly, I feel like I haven't gotten much done this past week. The motto that we've been saying this past entire vlog is some progress is better than no progress. On my last night in LA, I watched Parasite at my friend's apartment and got to meet his cute little dog, Juno. We then grabbed a late dinner with our other friends and we just had a really good time and you can tell how much of a good mood I was in because of how nice my tone of voice is in this next clip. <laughs> 
Thanks for watching Parasite with yeah. me. We have to talk more about that. Yeah. I need to read more um, thought articles on it. Oh, that's really, a good idea. That's, that's what I do idea. every time yeah. I finish a movie. It is past midnight, and I am definitely not going to get any writing done for the rest of the night because I need to sleep. I have a check-in with my creative director tomorrow morning for the project that we are working on. I don't have any regrets, though, for staying out so late. This past week has just been really helpful for me to start to feel like my life is on track. I'm feeling more fulfilled in the projects that I'm doing for work, and I'm getting to socialize a lot more with my friends. And even though that does take away my writing time, I think that it just improves my mental health overall because the week leading up to this my depression had worsened a lot so being able to fly out to LA was kind of like a mini vacation for me because I got to have a nice change in scenery and I got to hang out with my friends I feel like my brain is wired to always crave novelty if I get used to something then my brain always slips back to my bad habits I always isolate myself for some reason and I don't know why I just need to open up more and make more of an effort to socialize because it really does help me be more mentally well adjusted. I don't have any writing updates for tonight. Really the only thing new that I sort of introduce is the characters are in a new world. This world was created when some event happened a long time ago. Mal had asked the main character, Corin, how long ago this event happened. And she said that it happened a hundred years ago. And Mal is like, wow, it only feels like it was yesterday that I came here. And Corin's like, what the fuck? Mal has to explain that in this world that they are in, time does not exist. So while you're in this world, sometimes it can feel like you've been in here for centuries and sometimes it can feel like you've only been here for a day. I have a feeling that one of the weak points in my story will be the weird inconsistent pacing, but now I have a stupid excuse to fall back on where I can say, well, of course the pacing was all over the place because time doesn't exist in this world. That is my justification for why why the story does not make sense when you read it. I don't need to be realistic because the entire world building is dependent on the fact that nothing fucking makes sense in here. Bam. Life hack. If you have made it this far watching this writing vlog, uh, thanks for sticking around and I hope you unsubscribe. Goodbye. Hey.